in continuous random variables. We've been looking at variance right now and I presented these two uh, definitions, these two different ways of calculating variance. Uh, there's this guy over here which is kind of like the, uh, the definition, if you like, of what variance is. We're taking our difference between each score and the mean. Uh, we square it because we're interested in the, the difference, um, you know, irrespective of which direction it's a difference. Like, is it above the mean? Is it below? Don't really care. I just care about how far away it is. Um, and then multiply by the probability of that difference happening. So this is kind of like our definition for variance. Um, but then we kind of provide this alternative version because we said, and um, I gave an example of this which I'll come back to you later, um, when you try evaluating this integral it's often a bit of a mess um, and so we basically said that for practical purposes we really use this particular definition when we have a uniform distribution whereas for more or less anything else we go with this guy over here. If you have a non-uniform uh, probability distribution this right hand definition for variance turns out to be much more useful. But what we didn't really have time to go into is, well, how do you convince yourself that these two actually are the same thing? Like, why should they give you the variance uh, using both formulas? Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to prove uh, that from that first initial definition, um, using some, uh, some knowledge of calculus, a bit of algebra, and also some of the particularities um, of probability density functions, we can take all that knowledge together and um, prove that we can get from one definition to the other. So let's have a go at that. We're going to start uh, over here on the left hand definition. And what I want to do with this is when I think about how to work with this thing, um, the x minus mu all squared, there's the, um, the mean right in there, mu for mean. Um, I want to be able to start integrating this, but because it's kind of squared at the moment, uh, it's difficult for me to see term by term what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do inside the integral is I'm going to expand that x minus mu. So we get x squared. Uh, we're going to subtract um, double the product of those two terms inside there, that binomial. And then we're going to add the square of the second one. So there's my x minus mu all squared. I've just expanded it. Um, it's of course multiplied by f of x, our probability density function, and we're integrating with respect to x. Now, to start to get to this thing over here on the right hand side, um, you can already start to see, oh, I, I'm already headed in the right direction. Um, for starters, if you have a look at this first term here, Right? You've got this x squared, when you, factor, you know, expand it out, not factorize, it's already factorized, when you expand it out, that x squared is going to multiply by f of x and you're integrating. Well, you can see that that's what you get over here. That's this term. That's the first piece. So somehow we've got to show that all the rest of the pieces here, once we sort of expand them out and um, try and use some of our knowledge to simplify them, we should somehow end up on just minus mu squared. So how do we get there? Well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to separate out these uh, terms into three different integrals. So the first one is the one I just highlighted in red underline. It's from a to b x squared um, f of x dx. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm kind of multiplying this guy across and then I treat it as its own integral, right? Uh, let's have a look at the next one. So I'll color these just so it's a bit more easy to follow. Um, this guy in here, what's that going to give me? So I'm going to subtract the integral from a to b of 2 mu x and then I'm multiplying again uh, by this f of x. I'm going to stop continue to write that because I have too many arrows and um, you can see I'm multiplying by f of x every time so there comes f of x dx so there's the final uh, the second rather integral and then what have we got in here so there's that mu squared so I'll stay with blue so I've got plus the integral from a to b of mu squared f of x dx. Okay, so hopefully you're following so far. All I've done here is I've split apart that one big integral which we got from the definition for variance and I've broken it into its component pieces. Okay, now um, how do I progress? Well like we saw before, um, this guy here, um, I, I get that in my second definition for variance so I don't need to change that guy. Um, it's kind of ready to go as it is. So then I have to think about well what about the rest of these pieces? So just to help us keep it all separate, I'm going to keep using the colors that I've used above. When you have a look at this second integral in here, what I notice is you've got this 2 and this 
mu, both of which are just numbers, right? Like mu, which is the expected value or the mean, after I go through all the whole process for my particular probability density function, um, eventually I get a number out, right? So if two and mu are just numbers, they are constant coefficients that I can factorize out just like anything else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, have that minus sign there and I'm gonna factorize out two and mu and then the rest of the integral follows. So I get x, f of x dx. Okay, so there's that middle one. And then I come over to this last one here, and in exactly the same way that two and mu are a uh, constant, they're just a number, the mu squared that you can see right here, that's also just a number. Um, part of what's hard about recognizing that is there's just so much algebra everywhere. In fact, the only numbers you can see are the, are the twos here, here, and here. Everything else is a pronumeral, and so you kind of have to hone your ability to recognize which pronumerals are constants, therefore they can be factorized out, and which ones of them are variables, and so they affect the integration, so you can't just take them out as factors. So you, mu squared is one of those uh, things that I can take out. So I, I'm going to factorize out the mu squared, and then I get left with the rest of the integral, which is just the f of x dx. OK, now maybe as you see these terms, your brain is starting to tick over, right? This first one here, I'm just going to leave it because um, it's going to be part of my final thing. Um, when you have a look at this guy here, um, I want you to focus in on just this one part of the um, expression. This part in here, let's lock that in. Uh, let's get the color looking right so it doesn't look so distracting. Okay, now when you have a look at this guy here, I wonder if you recognize what the integral from A to B of x f of x is. Think about what's going on here, right? What you're doing is you're taking each score and then you're multiplying by its probability. Um, we've done this calculation recently, right? This is how we work out the expected value. It's every score multiplied by how likely you are to get that score. So since it's the expected value, it's also the mean which is mu, right? So therefore, I can write this as minus two mu, that whole integral just becomes mu again, right? So two mu times mu, I'll simplify that on the next line. When you have a look over here, um, again, I'm gonna ask you to focus on the integral. So let's, uh, let's highlight it with blue this time, because that's the color of this guy. And um, we'll do the same thing, make it look a little more consistent, there we go. Now when you have a look at this integral, I hope it's even easier to recognize. This is the integral over the entire domain from A to B of your function. That's all the probabilities are being added up. So therefore, if you're adding up all the probabilities, then this entire integral should just give you one because it's a probability density function. So what I can say here is you've got that mu squared that's outside of the integral and then the integral itself, which just gives you one. So now, um, I think that it's sufficiently simple. I'm just going to write this all in a single color now because I think you can follow along. Um, this first term here, that integral is just going to stay put. I've got minus 2 mu squared plus um, a single mu squared. So I can just collect like terms over here on the right-hand side. Uh, one more time, this integral is just going to stay where it is. And then I get minus, um, well, 2 mu squared plus 1 mu squared is just going to leave me with minus mu squared. And that's the result we were having a look at. Hopefully you recognize that from up the top here, right there, this is the result we were hoping to prove. So there's not as many lines, but you really have to think carefully. Um, and there's just, there's just so much algebra in here that it's easy to get lost, to be honest, especially when these terms are unfamiliar with us. Now, um, the last thing that it's uh, worth me mentioning is that this is us showing um, how the two formulas for variance, they really are the same. Just to convince yourself so you don't have to just accept because someone tells you that they are the same. Um, but I just want to make some final notes on notation. So if you have a look here, this is what we've been calculating here, is variance, right? And um, one of the things that you can see in the original definition for variance, this guy up here, is that we state that in terms of this integral, right? So I'm going to write it over here. Um, the integral from a to b of x minus mu, all squared, times your probability, f of x, dx. Okay, that's what's equal to this. Okay, now um, it's worth noting that you know this mu that we use for instead of expected value, um, we use it instead of writing um, e of x because it is ever so slightly more succinct, especially because you've got lots of them flying around. So it's just easier to write mu, especially when you're multiplying and collecting like terms and all the rest. But I want you to remember that the expected value um, is by definition, it's the integral from a to b of x f of x. 
And the thing is that the expected value of x, it sort of goes into this x that you can see out the front. The expected value of that score is the score times the probabilities, okay? Now what that means is whatever is in here and in here ends up being equivalent. And you can actually see that in these other two integrals that you have over here on the left hand side. It's just that we don't have x inside the integral, we've got these other things, so for example, uh, let's go with this one. Um, in here, you don't have an x, you have an x squared. So therefore, we can rewrite uh, this integral here as, uh, not an integral, as an expected value. Except it's not the expected value of x, it's the expected value of, I'll write it in the right color so you can see it, it's the expected value of x squared. Um, and I'm getting that from this guy here, okay? Um, you can see on the left hand side, you've got this other integral over here. Let's put it in um, purple, we'll do. So I've got the x minus mu all squared in there instead of just an x. So therefore, this guy on the left can also be written as an expected value. It's the expected value of um, what you can see in purple. So it's x minus mu all squared. Okay, so that's a different expected value. Um, and then you've got this uh, minus mu squared on the end, which we could just as easily have written as, uh, I'll put it in a, a lighter color so we don't confuse it. Um, this we could have written as the expected value. Uh, sometimes they just put that square right on the end there, okay? So what's sort of appealing about this way that you can see it written down here is, you can state the entire thing as a relationship between a bunch of different expected values. And, and the reason why this guy in here, which I'll just highlight uh, one last time in one big box, this guy here is where I wanted to end, is because this is the result that gets given to you on your reference sheet. So if you have a look at the statistics section, it's on the second page, so here's page one, here's page two. And when you go over to do statistical analysis, just underneath this section that talks about the normal distribution, um, you've got these uh, symbols in here, right? So you've got uh, expected value equals mu, so that's saying expected value and mean are the same thing. Um, and then you've got this expression in here. I'm just going to put these side by side so you can see them. Um, variance here um, on the right hand side, uh, variance equals, and then you can see expected value of x minus mu all squared, so that's what I wrote here, equals the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. So this result here is the one which we want you to be able to refer to, uh, but you can see what's underneath it is this series of integrals. It's really calculus which helps us interpret like where these results come from and why they're true. So hope you find that helpful and that it convinces you uh, why we can use re these results, not just you know that they're true, but you know the reason that they're true.